Oh God. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be mercifully short with this. I think, cause I haven't really read over it yet. Um, but I will one day, uh, Vito Jeswaldi, who called himself a pedophile and is friends with pedophile Max Carson since high school. Um, had, after deciding that Eric July is a faggot, uh, for making being black and making a comic that he did not authorize. Uh, Vito decided, you know what? I'm going to make my own comic with blackjack and hookers. So he went onto the internet and he begged for money and received about $60,000 to start a comic book called super killer, uh, which would be his answer to show the world that really he has writing chops. He loves comics. It's his lifelong passion. And he definitely has what it takes to be a comic book writer to challenge a hack fraud like Eric July and one up the black man super comic game. Well, he was asking for some creative input on his writing on a stream recently, and he decided I'll pull up the script and I'll uh, go to certain parts and I'll talk about the script with these people. And what he didn't realize is that when he was screen sharing, the URL at the top of the page uh, for the Google Drive document was a full uh, Google was like a full access URL. So anyone with that link would be able to view the entire document and save it as a PDF file, which they did. So now the entire script of the unreleased super killer has been released. I suppose intentionally, I know, I don't know how these things work. I'm assuming that he wanted more input before he finalized and paid for all the art and stuff. Right? So if we want to go over this and review it, uh, as of course, Beto has done with other artists and their, their comic books, I would be completely within my rights to chat, uh, especially considering that this book will never, ever be fucking released because it's shit. I base this off of skimming through it. I'm going to read. Um, let's start with the ending. Actually. I like starting with the ending because the main character super killer. Uh, you could be forgiven for not know realizing this because of how he's skinny and not a fat, disgusting piece of shit slob. Uh, this is supposed to be like Vito self insert. So let's just read the ending. Uh, spoiler alert, Snape kills Dumbledore. It's a cliffhanger. I suppose, uh, apparently comic books end on cliffhangers. Hangers. You got to get people buying the next episode. Um, Eric July ended his comic book on a cliffhanger, so it's not that bad, right? Uh, page 47, um, overhead shot. This is panel one. Overhead shot, Beck, who is the uh, sidekick, says, or apparently her being the sidekick is like a huge deal in the, the way that this is structured, but she is... I think an unwitting heroine. She's like joined her on against her will. And uh, I'll talk about her a bit more in a second. But Beck is passed out in the grass, completely naked. Sam has landed on top of her and appearing to straddle her sexually. Sam, well, this looks bad. Panel two. Sam's head turns towards a nearby shriek. Woman off screen. Eek. Panel three, a woman points at Sam, onlookers behind her, turning in the direction of her scream. Woman, rapist, get your hands off her. Panel four, Sam is still straddling Beck, one of his hands on her breast. We see two Sam heads, one trying to explain the situation to the woman and the other looking down and freaking out as he realizes what he's touching. Whip blur between both heads. So that's like very anime. Sam Lady, this is all a big mistake, I assure you. Sam, again, ah, this is the last page of the book. Panel one, an angry man holds up a beer bottle, pointing at Sam. Another angry park patrons are behind him. Man, let's kick his ass. Panel two, the angry mob descends on Sam, kicking up a cartoonish dust cloud that envelops him. Sam, ah, and then Sam, B-jams. Ah, <laughs> Beck, where do they get their money? Ah. <laughs> Just kidding. Panel three, Beck, barely conscious, shot is framed chest up. Her nipples tastefully just out of frame. Her mouth is flat. What the fuck does that mean? Can anyone explain to me what a flat mouth is? Besides her, the mob fights in a cloud of dust. Man off screen. What's that chest emblem stand for? Sex creep? Sam, please, this is all a misunderstanding. Panel four, close up of Beck. She smiles as if in a dream. Panel five, this is the final panel of the entire book. Super close up of Beck, speaking the word that she has been waiting to hear her entire life. Sidekick. 
Um, and then I assume I, there's no page 49, but I am assuming that he's adding the panel where the snow globe rolls out of her hand and smashes on the fucking ground. It's basically, if you really think about it, this is a masterpiece. Um, if you don't, if you uh, haven't picked up on the symbolism, the symbolism is that Vito, because of his own words and associations and deliberate actions and what he's decided to talk about for years and years, uh, has been called a pedophile. Probably because he is one. And Star Killer, his self insert or super killer, uh, is also being falsely accused of something he didn't do. And the angry mob just doesn't understand. It's a misunderstanding, Uwu. And now poor, poor super killer, just like Vito and real wife, is being beaded up by people who just don't take a second to listen to his reasonable explanations of things. Rose Chud. <laughs> um... So that, that's how that's how it ends. Uh, Snape killed Dumbledore, and then let's go back to the, the first page, or this is the page two. So this is where Beck is introduced, and I clipped the I um clipped these out just because it's like everything in this is supposed to be a parody. It's a work of satire, so there's like supposed to be all these uh, Family Guy like j like references to fucking everything. Like this is like the time that that um that the Simpsons did this thing. So he has like an image because he can't explain these references in, in, in like a rational way. So he just includes like a screenshot of The Simpsons. In this one, he's trying to explain what a neat bedroom looks like. So he just includes a shot of some anime. Uh, if you know what anime this is, please take a gun and shoot yourself in the head. And then in uh, flipping back to Beck, he just picked like a random picture of this. And what's really weird is that this picture of the of the diner woman is completely and totally not a representation of um what he's actually describing in his comic book uh, page two panel one inside diner day uh small insect corner panel comic book sits on the diner counter the page is open to reveal the entirety of the previous page was actually a page from an in world meteor man comic book a family a female hand holds the page open back off screen wow so the first page is supposed to be some bullshit where it's like a traditional style superhero comic and then it cuts to the reality and then there's actually a comic book and it's supposed to set up this comic is not like other comics we're gonna break the fourth wall i'm a pickle rick it's like that that's how bad we are right off the bat um panel two then we have the picture of a random woman who is completely um not what he's describing in the paragraph under it a uh, full page shot we meet our heroine rebecca romano aka beck this is our first ever shot of our heroine make it count she's a bit of a nerd kind of a girl the kind of girl to throw on a gamer headset and play some league of legends rather than hit the mall or club but despite her tomboyish attitude she is an understated beauty with dark lashes full lips and cascading brown hair so if you're the type of guy that masturbates to tomboy shit on the internet, the people jerking off with you are Vito. I just want to make sure that that is known. That's what's being described here. Uh, that's that's the camp you find yourself in. Oh, sorry. I got rid of the beautiful comic I want you to read. Um, She wears a stereotypical waitress's outfit. See the reference above. I do. <laughs> Man, thank God for this reference. If it wasn't for this reference, I would never know what a fucking diner waitress wears. That sh that my world of understanding does not include concepts such as diners. Thanks, Vito. Um. Then there's this description. This is this right here. This is on page three. So this is like your introduction to this fifty-page comic book. Beck looks down at the comic book on the counter, appearing bored. One hand holds the comic book open while she rests her chin on the other. Her name tag clearly reads Beck. Behind her are expected accessories of a diner, a microwave, condiment bottle, coffee machine, whatever feels right. Beck, were comics always this bad? So page three, all, you've, all you see so far is like... A, I assume it's actually let me pull up the first page. Let me see if this is like a direct Eric July um, reference that I'm just not getting. I want to make I want to make sure that my super killer review is completely accurate. Page one, this entire page should be done up as a page from the Golden Age comic book screen tones, old fashioned artwork. So this, this isn't even specifically making fun of Eric July. This is just supposed to be like, remember old comics? Weren't they bad? Like, yeah. 
<laughs> Panel one, inside secret base, the fiendishly evil villain UFO bot at a computer control panel, his eyes wide open to find his evil deeds are interrupted by the arrival of a mighty hero, Meteor Man. The hero's flying punch has easily broken through the rock of USO bot's secret base. Bits of debris are still filling the air. Meteor Man flies through the hole his punch has created. He says, looks like the jig is up, UFO bot. UFO bot says, Meteor Man, but that radioactive meteorite should have disabled your powers. So this is supposed to be, like, intentionally bad. It's, but then... Then it, then it cuts to... Yeah, it's just, like, trite shit. Ironically, this is, like, the most detailed page of the entire thing. Like, the only thing that Vito describes that takes up, like, three pages like this is apparently the one page that's supposed to be really bad. He knows what bad looks like. That's what I'm getting from this. Cool. Um, and that's it. Uh, there's 50 pages of Super Killer for you to read. This is only version 3, so keep in mind, you might update this and fix everything. Uh, but the, what you're reading is uh, has gone through three iterations of re revision, <laughs> and this is what it's mounted up to. Great, awesome. This is such a bad idea, idea for Vito. Why did he choose to die on the hill? If I can make good comic, even though I have no experience and don't like comics, um, because he's a fat retard. That can be described by literally everything that that Vito does. Is he's a fat retard? Why does he think that he can do certain things? Because uh, he's a fat retard. I mean, no, no. His his current tweets are like, "Your your outrage makes me famous, idiot." Like nobody's supporting you. Your videos make like twelve dollars a month on YouTube, and that's with the the Star Wars shit that broke a million dollars. He lives in California, and he makes less than like fifty thousand dollars a year. And I'm supposed to be jealous of his of his income? Are you fucking ridiculous? Like, and imagine all the things he's had to sacrifice. Whenever, like, you hear, oh, this guy makes $50,000 off of his internet presence, that's his entire life. He lives in L.A. He's cut off his prospects. He's known as a pedophile because he keeps defending stupid, edgy shit and has outright said that he's a pedophile. And now that's, like, that's like his lot. And he makes a little bit of, and he makes enough money to feed his fat ass, and that's about it. Cool. <laughs> Uh, I will re look, dude, I got a list of shit to do. Um, the next few months are going to be absolutely fucking crazy for me. And then halfway through 2024, I will hope I, I want it to be done already. I want it to be in the US already, but um, that's not happening. So <laughs> uh, bear with me. I'm in, in a perpetual state of suffering. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.